Greg Hurrell here again to talk about Vim and we've been talking about mappings. So let's finish off by talking about the one mode that I haven't talked about, which is leader. Now leader is not really a mode. Um, and in fact, if you look at this uh, file, they are all normal mode mappings. Uh, but nevertheless, leader is conceptually kind of like a namespace uh, and an important category of mappings, mappings. And that's why I've got them in a separate file. Um, now, if you ever looked at a picture of all of the th bindings that apply on, on the keyboard um, in normal mode or even insert mode, you notice that by default Vim already has pretty much every key bound to something useful. So where are you going to put all of your configuration that, without jettisoning some useful core functionality that you would otherwise want to maintain access to? Well, the answer is leader. And there are in fact two leaders. Uh, if you look in this file, there's also the local leader local leader there we go so by default leader is backslash uh, I had it as backslash for a while another common one I think might be comma I had that when I first started using Vim um, but of late at least for the last year or two I've been using spaces leader um, and if you've seen my screencast on tmux you'll know that I use control space as my tmux prefix um, and if you saw the screencast on carabina you'll know that I also have a space fn layout which basically means that when I hold down the space bar and press some other key at the same time I can activate this other layer and do other things like move the cursor so for me space is this kind of meta key that does a bunch of things so space is my leader and as my local leader I've actually gone and set backslash so effectively I have these two leaders space leader for the most common operations that I do all the time and local leader for for the operations that I don't do as often, but I still want them to be kind of accessible. So let's have a look at some of these. Um, the most relevant of all, because I do it all the time, is leader leader. So if, in my case, this is literally just banging the space bar twice. It enables me to go to the previously visited buffer. So let me just open a file, just at random here, I'm gonna open the readme. If it's space space, I'm back where I was. Space space again, I'm back at the readme. This is very valuable real estate, very low energy to activate, so you should put your most common operation on it. Uh, leader row gives, makes the buffer that I'm currently in the only buffer, so that's another pretty common operation. Uh, leader P shows me the name of the buffer in the status line down here. This is useful, for example, in a scenario where I have a lot of splits. So let's just imagine this window here on the left. I might have 10 of these splits and I can't remember what the name of the file is. Leader P is going to show me the file name there. Uh, so related to that is leader PP that in addition to printing the file, also puts it in the clipboard. So if I open a new buffer now and paste, you'll see that it pasted the thing that I just copied. What else have we got here? Uh, leader Q to close a buffer. So I do this fairly often, so leader Q, it's gone. Uh, relatedly, I'm just going to skip a couple of entries here. Leader W, leader X are for write and exit, which are two things that I do a lot. Um, as you probably know, X, exit, both saves and exits the buffer. Um, up here in line 20, another mapping that I've shown is this leader R for cycling the numbers. So I can go between relative line numbers, absolute line numbers, and no line numbers. To be honest, I don't do this often enough that it really justifies being on leader R. Maybe this is the kind of thing that should be demoted to local leader, but that's kind of mute, moot even. Uh, so here I have a mapping for deleting trailing lines. So let's have a look at what that looks like. It's calling this function here, zap, um, which basically just remembers the cursor position, remembers the last search, replaces any trailing white space in the file with nothing at all, effectively shrinking it to nothing. Then it restores the last search pattern, turns off search highlighting, and restores the cursor position. So a lot of people have this set up to happen automatically on save. And I personally don't like the thought that the editor will rewrite the file for me. I want every change to the data of the file to be the result of an explicit command on my part. So if I put a white space error in here, as you can see, I want to be able to fix that with leader ZZ. Um, and the reason why it's leader ZZ and not just leader Z is because it is a destructive operation. It's an edit. I want it to be something that I activate intentionally and not by accident. Uh, so moving on, uh, the only local leader mapping you can see in this file is this thing. 
C, mononic coloring, which basically forces syntax highlighting to recompute itself from the start of the file. This is useful because in order to be efficient and speedy, Vim has this configurable interval that it will use for the purposes of syntax highlighting. It doesn't just look at the, the stuff that's visible on the screen. It also looks uh, at a certain range above and potentially below the cursor line, but I think it's above. Um, for the purposes of pattern matching and deciding what rule applies. So sometimes it gets confused. Uh, and the way to get it unconfused is to force it to do an expensive scan from the top of the file. So I probably use this one a few times a month, but often enough that it deserves a mapping because I'm not going to remember this syntax sync from start command, but I can remember a mapping. Um, and finally, this last one is going to allow me to edit a file in the same directory as the current file. So if you look down here at the bottom of the window, uh, you'll see that I'm in this roles.files, files, vim, plugin, mappings, leader.vim file. Uh, maybe I want to create a file that's a sibling of this file. So if I hit local leader E, then I get the directory that I'm in, but not the file. And so I could create a new file called foo and start editing. So that's the use case when I want to create a file. If I just want to open a sibling, uh, I'm not going to do that and you know, tab through. It's quicker for me to use the minus mapping that I've previously discussed and select a file, a sibling that way. Or I could just use you know, command T and fuzzy find the file. Uh, so given that leader is so important, you may wonder why I have so few mappings in this file. It's only 36 lines long. Um, the reason is a lot of leader mappings actually come from plugins. So if I look at leader mappings, you'll see that there are, most of the alphabet is covered. Um, so, yep, that's it for leader mappings, really. Uh, thanks for taking the time to look at all these mappings with me. Um, and I would encourage you to both share and steal as many mappings as, uh, and, and have you to be productive. I think it's uh, one of the most fun parts of customizing BIM. Thanks.